Hello everybody, Gladman here. So today, now we're going to be working on the, uh, or now we're going to be continuing the Ultrasonic Closest Project. So, uh, we also need to add another variable up here. There's going to be uh, a float of closest distance. Like that, and we're just going to make that uh, 1,000 for now, and we're just going to make that a float like that. Now, we're going to have a while loop here that will run while the pilot dot is moving. So, while it is moving or rotating, it will do this while loop. Now, in here, we're going to make a quick little delay that will delay for, uh, let's just say, 10 milliseconds. So it'll do 100 samples per second. And that seems a little bit excessive. We'll do uh, 50 samples per second. Now, we're going to get our reading from the ultrasonic sensor. So we're going to do float distance is assigned ultra dot distance, like that. So now we've got our local variable distance, and then we're going to compare it to our closest distance, which we set by default to a really high value. Um, I believe the ultrasonic sensor goes up to 255, um, though that might be pushing it a little bit. It might be somewhere around like 2.5 meters, or 255. Um, but either way, it's still ridiculously high. The ultrasonic sensor can't read a kilometer. You know, I mean, that's just a little bit ridiculous for it. So, uh, that's why our value is so high there. So now, we're going to do an if the distance is less than our closest distance. A, we need to set our closest distance to the new distance. And then we're assigning with one equal sign to the distance variable. Now, we also need to set our closest angle, which is what we're going to use to rotate back to. So, we're going to do closest angle is assigned pilot dot get angle increment which will be the angle rotated since rotation began. And now, that should be done there. So while it's moving, it'll delay for 20 milliseconds, so it can do 50 samples per second, which uh, will be about one degree per uh, sample. And then it'll do that. When it is done rotating, let me just give some space here, what we want to do is we want to rotate back to that angle and then drive forward. So we're going to do pilot dot rotate and then we need to do a little bit of math in there but for first we need to make sure that we are traveling at a decent speed so we're going to set the rotate speed and we're going to make that uh, 180 degrees per second. Here we need to do uh, a little bit of math so that our closest angle, which should be increasing from 0 to 360, um, we can then get back to it. So we're going to do closest angle minus 360 so that, let's just say, we've now rotated from here all the way around to here. Our closest angle was somewhere over here. So now we can do from that angle we need to rotate that many degrees because 360 it'll pass the zero mark and move it negative however far it needs to go. So that will do just basically a little bit of math to get us to there. And then what we can do is we can do a forward call and then uh, we'll enter another while loop that will say while 
distance is greater than 10, or than 0.1, like that. And we're also going to change this up so that we delete that, and then what we're going to do is going to make it a local variable to the uh, method here. And we're just going to assign it to 0 for a default variable, or 0, 0.0 for a default value. Here, we then need to do a distance is assigned ultra dot distance, like that. And then we need to just drive forward while that distance is doing that. And uh, so we're just going to do a little delay, a millisecond delay. And we're just going to delay for the 20 milliseconds that we had up there as well. And we're just going to do another distance is assigned ultra dot distance, like that. So that this value can continually check. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do pilot dot stop. And then uh, up here. So um, there's actually a little bug in our program. What we need to do is because this is never closed, we need to just cut that from there and then paste that there. And then we're going to do us is assigned that. And then here we can do us dot close like that so that it will be closed. So we can save that and then we can close that for now. And then what we can do is we can just uh, click, let me click on the arrow, there we go. And then we need to run as a Lighthouse EB3 program and that will upload to the brick after it compiles. Uh, you can see jar file has been created successfully and it just complains that I don't have an EB3 plugged in. So anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!